I welcome you for a keynote speak speech of uh, second day of this international conference. And for this uh, keynote speech, we have a keynote speaker, Professor Vishwan Savan sir, professor from IIT Roorkee. Before proceeding, let me give a brief introduction of uh, Professor Savan. Professor Savan did M Tech from IIT Bombay and PhD from IIT Bombay in Geotech Engineering. Professor Savant has guided around 12 students for PhD and uh, nearby 100 students for MTech. He has published uh, around uh, 86 international journal papers in peer-reviewed journals. Professor Savant associated with IIT Roorkee since last 20 years. I welcome Professor Savant on behalf of Department of Civil Engineering, Government College of Engineering, Karad. Now I request Professor Savant, please proceed the session. Hello. So good morning, yes, all of you. Uh, first, let me thank all the organizers from GEC Karad and uh, REC Ajamgad. Okay. Uh, I can see some familiar faces here. Uh, I can see Professor Vankhede. Good morning, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, so today's topic is uh, finite element method in geodesical engineering. Normally, the <coughs> uh, is am audible? Yes, yes sir. Okay, okay. Uh, so normally, when we speak about FEM, the mainly we talk about beam elements, uh, truss elements, or plate elements. Mainly, it is taught from structural point of view. But for geotechnical engineering, it is a little bit different. Okay. Mainly, we have to consider a semi-infinite domain. And in the case of structural engineering, more or less their domain is quite uh, restricted by the size of the structure. But in the case of geotech, we have to go for or deal with infinite, semi-infinite domain. So today we'll discuss about it. So I am going to cover uh, this four class of problems in geotechnical engineering. The first is stress deformation analysis, second is seepage, third is consolidation, and the fourth is excavation. Okay. So we'll talk about this. Uh, deformation, seepage, consolidation. Now we can know that in the case of uh, all the structure, we can always approach them by a differential equation. Because in many cases, we can write down a situation and that is quite fair enough. Okay. By considering the derivative or rate of change of the variable with respect to time or with respect to space direction, and we can have a governing equation and then we solve the equation. Okay. Now, these equations can be solved. There are two ways one is you can solve it uh, analytically. Analytical solution is possible in the two conditions that it should be a regular domain, the size of domain should be a regular like a straight line or a circle or a rectangular. Second thing is uh, we need uh, homogeneous material properties. The properties of the domain should be homogeneous. If these two conditions exist, then only we can solve the problem analytically. Otherwise, we have to go for numerical methods. Uh, easiest method is the finite difference method. We also call it as a strong form solution. And the solutions are very accurate also for the uh, given type of problem. But the, again, this finite difference method is uh, uh, very suitable for a regular domain. Maybe, for example, if I'm having a one dimensional problem, it is the best way I can differentiate or discrete the domain with the help of finite difference method. But for 2D or 3D case, the finite difference method becomes cumbersome because if I want to change the problem for a change the my analysis for a different domain, I have to rewrite again a new program for that. Okay, and in the case of FEM, uh, that approach that is quite mechanized way. Okay, that's why we are going for always for uh, FEM analysis in place of uh, finite difference method because in the FEM your program will remain safe. Only thing you have to give input on your 
number of elements, total connectivity, their coordinates, and all, and it will take care of everything. Whether it is a regular domain or a domain of regular shape, you can also always introduce uh, non homogeneity in the media by assigning different material properties to the every element. Okay, that's how you can handle it. That is the beauty of the FDM. And now we'll try to discuss these four types of problems. First is always stress deformation analysis. We are applying a little say, load on the maybe the ground level or anywhere in the anywhere in the domain, and we can find out its stress distribution across the domain. Okay, so we can start with the first simple problem or basic problem of stress deformation analysis. Now I am just giving here uh, a two-dimensional analysis, and 3D can be extended always. So in the case of 2D, I am considering let us say a vertical plane with x and y axis. We have two displacements, uh, u in the horizontal x direction and v the vertical displacement. And I can have three strains, strain in x, y direction, that is the longitudinal strains, epsilon x, epsilon y, and shear strain. Okay. Now, in the case of FPM, we always use shape functions to uh, approximate displacement within the element. Okay. Whatever meaning is that within the element that uh, displacements are vary as per our shape functions or our approximations. Okay, that is our first assumption in the case of FPM. Okay, uh, so this is the famous relation. We know that they are we can always expressed by derivatives del u by del x, del v by del y, and shear strain as the distortion del u by del y plus del v by del x. Okay. Uh, second, we want relation between the stress and strains. It depends upon the constitutive uh, matrix basically. In the case of laser analysis or tension condition, we can show the matrix is given in the face either in the form of uh, modulus of velocity E and Poisson's ratio mu or lambda and 2G Lamis constant and shear modulus, or also we can put in the form of bulk modulus and shear modulus. Okay, we can see that. Okay. Now we will go to the actual governing equation for any. Uh, an event, you can always write down the governing equation in this form. If you take the equate forces in x direction and y direction, eh? okay, we can have a equation given here. That is the first two equations. They are the equation in x direction and y direction. That is, it depends upon total stress equilibrium. Please note that in the case of soil mechanics, the equilibrium equations are always in terms of total stress. It, it, they are not in terms of effective stress because it, they have to satisfy first total force equilibrium. Okay. So the equations will be always in terms of total stress. Then you can maybe write down as total stress is equal to effective stress plus pore pressure. But the first basic equation will be always in terms of total stress. Please note that. Okay. And we can write down this again in the form of partial derivatives operating on uh, sigma x, sigma y, and tau xy. And there will be a body vector depending upon the body forces. And in this case, the body forces will be mainly gx will be zero and gy will be unit weight of the soil. Okay. So we are writing down this equation in the form of maybe uh, what you can say a partial derivative or del operator, and this is the convenient way. Okay, and you can see that it is just the transpose of relation between the strain displacement matrix that the operator did. Okay. Then we can have the stresses expressed in terms of planes where these constitute matrix. Okay, it can be for plane stress, or it can be even you can change it for plane stress condition also if the model uh, requirement is there. Okay, and this is our governing equation in the matrix form. Okay, uh, now we can apply the variational approach, simple approach, we are multiplying by displacements and integrating over the domain, and we can solve it. Or maybe you can just simplify it in these steps. Okay. And you can get a final simple equation in the form of k into q is equal to fu, where k is the integration of the transpose dB over the element area or over the volume of the element. So FPM you can always summarize by one single equation. Thickness matrix is equal to integral B transpose dB over the area of the element or volume of the element, depending upon it is 2D or 3D. Okay, that's good. And that is the way we can always use the analysis. Now, whatever your uh, problem is there, you have to first take the effort to formulate the B matrix. And once you done the, with the B matrix, you are almost 50% of the task is over. Okay. 
you can always uh, write down the code for v matrix and all the rest of the procedure are quite mechanical you are performing this uh, product v transpose vb over the cos points cos particular points on the elements and you are adding it updating the stiffness matrix and then then the assembly that you are doing with the help of neural connectivity so all the other procedure is quite mechanical okay by assigning them neural connectivity and by helping them in assembling in the global stiffness matrix can be considered as a mechanical process okay so basic formulation part is you have to write down the stiffness matrix where so first formulate the v matrix and in the many cases only this v matrix will vary and the result procedure will be quite same okay so this is the basic equations one is for stiffness matrix and one is for the force vector it depends upon the body force it may be depend upon the traction applying over the either surface or the line or the boundaries okay that's what we can do okay now so this is the formulation of the v matrix it is in terms of where b is relation between the strains and displacements and with the help of shape function we can do it okay now in this case our assumption starts here now in the case of axiom there are two assumptions first assumption is regarding the variation in the displacements over the element okay that we can do it with the help of shape functions okay now we'll discuss various type of elements here little bit okay now the first basic simple element developed was a rectangular element three node element and it was the most simple element that is the one thing and beauty of this because of its rectangular shape it, it can accommodate most of the irregular shapes also that was again one more beauty of the element third point was in this case in the case of three node elements it which uh, maybe it may can be considered as a drawback also um, in this case the trains are constant within the element trains are constant that is supposed to be a drawback and that can overcome it by taking large num number of elements so you can see the element here with three nodes and with two degrees of freedom displacement in horizontal and vertical direction now we can just have one more element so again use four node rectangular element with having four nodes okay with two degrees of freedom for each element shape functions can be n1 to n4 okay so this is the shape function matrix for it now set function for triangle element can be generated in a simple way with the help of uh, geometry of the element with the help of this equation simple equation where delta is the area of the triangle and the equation can be of the form of 1 by 2 delta into ai plus bi x plus ci y and where i can be going from 1 to 3 and a ai bi ci are expressed in for x and y coordinates and you can see that when you operate the derivative over it the expression for v matrix is 1 by 2 delta into the constants b1 and c1 and this b1 and c1 they are just dependent on on the x y coordinates and not on the variable x and y the meaning is that this b matrix will be always a constant matrix it is not function of the variable x and y so b matrix is constant that is again you can take the advantage of it so in the integration we transpose where b is constant d material property as in constant for linear element again b constant so you can take it out of the integration sign so it will be just b transpose db into area of the element okay and that is the simplest form where you have just calculate the area of the element and you have to multiply it by the product b transpose db where and b transpose is always a uh form of only of b's and c's okay that is depend on the x and y coordinates now for a uh, sector element i can uh, one more thing is more advanced element over the first one in the case of zero element our displacements were linearly across x and y direction now in this case sector element we can have a parabolic variation or parabolic variation over the element so here we can have a basic variable here it may be u or it may be v okay and it is a parabolic variation in the form of three natural coordinates l1 l2 l3 now what is l1 l2 l3 if i am taking any point within the triangle in that case that point will divide the triangle into three triangles okay a1 a2 and a3 okay where total area is equal to a1 plus a2 plus a3 
so l1 is a1 by a l2 is a2 by a l3 is a3 by a and so on okay so that is the way we can write down and can always solve it for this and we can have six shape six shape functions here okay here integral we can use by simple rule and that is so with the help of this also we can always possible for us to express this uh, solve this stiffness matrix analytically okay now we can apply this uh, this is a simple example of it we have applied for a footing resting on a soil here okay the, the road was applied here this is a load over here then this is equivalent surcharge equal to gamma d okay and we had divided this problem into number of elements here okay now in the case of uh, one more thing i want to share in the case of uh, soil soil mechanics problems you are always dealing with semi infinite domain okay so you have to take care that there are two assumptions basically you are involving in the analysis you are approximating displacements within element by a shape function or polynomial function that's the first assumption second thing is you are modeling a semi infinite domain into a finite domain you are assuming that at certain distance from your uh, point of interest your displacement or effect is vanishing okay so after a certain boundary you assume that the effect is not there and displacements are zero there is no effect of this Uh, whatever loading is taking place on the domain, that effect is nullified or vanished at this particular boundary, and we assume that at this boundary, our displacement are zero. Okay, and that is our second assumption. And as far as possible, this boundary should be far enough from the our uh, what you can say, the stress zone. Okay, if I am taking boundary too close to the uh, so what will happen? That means I am creating a rigid boundary. or i am restricting displacement so physically it means that i am applying some external force from outside and uh, uh, maintaining that particular boundary as a rigid boundary to maintain that rigidity or displacement zero i have to apply some external force and that that i will create that fixed boundary so our boundary should be such that it should not have any uh, uh, impact on the domain that means if i am applying a force at a point of interest then at the boundary there should not be any stresses the extra stresses other than the in situ stresses like because of the gravity that is sigma z and maybe sigma v or k0 times sigma v that is a pressure at rest other than that the extra stress developed due to a loading on the domain should be negligible that is the first condition on the boundary that if you are satisfying that that means your boundaries are perfect and you can go for the domain that's what we have to try with some iterations first we can assume boundary at 5b 6b 7b up to let us say 10b and all and we can see that where your results are converging if the results are converge you can go with that particular domain okay so here we applied the problem for a footing and i have taken boundaries 10b apart and this is the, my particular displacement curve okay and i have equated with the our bearing capacity equation given by rich and anse the problem was done for 3d analysis also in this case it was applied for a pile okay and the bending moment and are compared here okay this is just an example okay so i'm just not going to detail of so quantified here Okay. Now we will go for some 3D. This is used basically element in the plexus. Okay, plexus used in the case of 3D. It used a 10 node tetrahedral element. There are 10 nodes, and you can see that every uh, edge is having three nodes. That means again, you can assume that on the every edge the variation is parabolic, or you can say quadratic. Okay. Uh, so there are 10 nodes having a second degree variation. Okay, you can see the shape functions for this 10. nodes is given by here element to n10 okay then these are the gauss points used for 10 node element okay even this can be also solved analytically also with the help of similar formula uh, described earlier gauss six node tangential element okay now this fourth problem was again same problem was done it for a problem of pile sloping round and we have just find out the pile capacity corresponding to a displacement of 5 mm 
and this for the effect of slope on it okay so second problem we'll consider is a problem of seepage we are considering four problems seepage one said deformation then seepage consolidation and excavation okay how to simulate seepage uh, this is our laplace equation in terms of permeability kx and ky in x horizontal and vertical direction this is the laplace equation here that you can write down in the form of partial derivatives in this form okay so it is a partial operator del here then a matrix of permeability kx and ky and then we have a uh, gradients del h by del x and del h by del y which will give you if you apply darcy's law they will give you the velocity in x and y direction so we can write down this now here you can discretize it uh, maybe you can assume shape function for your rectangular or triangular element here and can express our head h in the form of shape function that head within the element can be given as n times h e where h is the value of head at nodal points see always shape function uh, express the variables with the help of nodal coordinates or nodal variables okay with the help of shape functions we can describe the variable within the element with the help of values of this variable at nodal points okay so we can see that now we can have this laplace expression modified in the form of partial derivatives del operator it is del x del by del x del by del y and we have shape function here okay again we can do a similar technique of applying gradient approach and we have a similar formula for uh, the element that is equal to integral bp transpose k into bp is equal to 0 okay where bp is again similarly operator del del by del x and del by del y operating on shape functions okay now we are saying it this derivation formulation for two types of elements one simple one is here again we have a four node element rectangular element and this is always given by a simple equation 1 by 4 1 plus psi and plus psi and psi and eta are given by x minus x and we have the elements and have this psi i eta values of minus 1 plus 1 depending upon load positions okay uh, so this is our bp matrix operator del operating on shape functions n1 to n4 and we can have this bp matrix over here and when we indicate this is possible to integrate as per the night linear ap that in the both in the of x ay also and of shape function ni with respect to x and i Pavan sir, please unmute yourself. Yes sir. Hey, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, am, I am audible. Yes sir. Okay, okay. I am not able to go back. Okay. So this was, uh, we will discuss about, uh, first, this was about triangular element. In the case of triangular elements, our because of our functions are quite simple. And you will be getting a stiffness matrix given by this expression. Okay. Triangle element, we don't have to worry about integration because it is a constant. So we can just have to multiply by area of triangle. Now we'll go for third problem, which is mainly encountered and giving a lot of headache to our geotechnical engineer is consolidation. Okay. So this is our equation given by del Sagi. Del U by del T is equal to coefficient of consolidation C V multiplied by del to U by del Z square. Okay, we can extend same formation for 2D or 3D also in the same line. Okay, we can write down again this equation in the form of partial derivatives and form of operators del by del z. Okay, 
we can assume that pore pressure can be approximated within the element by shape functions as u is equal to shape function matrix multiplied by its total values u e okay now again you can write see here uh, we are trying to uh, again formulate the stiffness of the element here for consolidation this is the same uh, differential equation we are writing in terms of derivatives and when you apply the variational approach ultimately we are getting a similar expression like this uh, integral b transpose cv into b multiplied by pore pressure elemental pore pressures minus n transpose n into derivative of pore pressure with respect to time equal to zero okay we can see that in the expression here where k is equal to integral b transpose cvp and m is equal to integral n transpose n similar the expression quite similar to the mass matrix okay now when you describe in the time domain you are getting the equation like this we can apply finite difference equation for time derivative u dot and you can get equation similar to this okay now because it is a 1d problem we can have shape functions as given by 1 by 2 1 minus i 1 by 2 1 plus i and you can have a partial derivative derivative of this with respect to z and we can get a constant b matrix and once b matrix is constant you don't have to worry about the integration because it will be just length of the element and finally we are getting equation of this particular type cv by 2a into 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 is similar to our bar element where you are getting equation as ea by l 1 minus 1 minus 1 okay then again the mass matrix for the element okay and with the help of final final difference scheme this is our final expression we are solving it for unknown pore pressure at the nodes okay so next thing one more problem problem encountered in the case of geodetic engineering is simulation of excavation very important one and we can see how we can do it let us say we are excavating a we have to excavate a volume a from a given total volume b Now what we'll do? Okay. Now first we'll don't excavate it. I will write down equivalent system. Let us say this same initial volume uh, condition we are writing in different form. If I calculate the traces of the domain A and apply it on the boundary in the form of tractions, again it will be the, the remaining domain B will be having the same trace distribution. That means I am calculating traces of the domain a at the boundary and applying it as a tractions di on the boundary and again it will give me same effect or same traces in the domain b okay so behavior b will be identical if material a is replaced and replaced by tractions now when i am doing the excavation what i will do because i am taking out that tractions or what i will do is then i will apply negative tractions on the same boundary okay that the way we model the excavation So when I excavate the volume A, what I will do is now I will apply the negative tractions or negative traces on the remaining volume B, and that the way I can model the excavation. That is the basically the scheme of modeling the excavation. Okay. So that's what we are doing is we can we can do it in the simulation or stage wise excavation. Okay. First we have to remove some part. For that purpose, first calculate traces of that particular excavation element. Calculate traces on the boundary and apply negative traces on the remaining volume. Okay, so that is quite important. So find out thickness of remaining volume B. Then find out traces on the excavated volume to be excavated volume and apply negative traces on the boundary portion. And you can see that here. Let us say this is our initial domain, where traces are sigma zero and strains are epsilon zero. Initial traces and initial strains. Okay. Now I am excavating only one particular part, so it my traces will be changed to sigma one. Strains will be changed to and will be given by sigma. Strains increment will be given by sigma one minus sigma not equal to three times epsilon one. For epsilon one, I am assuming that initially I have calculated stresses and I have uh, what you can see state uh, state my all the strains to be equal to zero. That 
normally we do it in the case of analysis. Okay. First, we solve the problem for initial stresses that we assume the gravity loading and we find out the stresses vertical and horizontal and we set displacement to be zero and then we proceed further. Okay. Now, at the second stage of excavation now, now this will be sigma 2 and again the stress will be given by is equal to D matrix into the strains between the two, different between the two stages. Okay. So this was given by uh, Brown and Booker in 1985 and that was used in the analysis part. Okay. This is the way we are going it. We are applying a small virtual displacement delta Q and then we integrate over the area of the domain and finally we can get equation in the final form. This is the final equation that is integral B transpose DB over the volume of the element into incremental displacements. Uh, now you can see there are three terms on the right hand side. Uh, I'm just talking first about second and third term first. Second is integral N transpose gamma DB force vector due to body forces. Third is integral N transpose T over DS force vector due to surface tractions. And the first term is quite important. It is minus integral B transpose sigma I minus 1 DB. Sigma I minus 1 is the traces on the boundary at the previous stage of excavation. Okay. And we are applying negative traces on the boundary of the element. So this is the, again you can see in schematic form. Okay, we are doing it by equation 54 here. If we are going for first stage, it will be given by this equation. For second stage of excavation, you can see that it is replaced by sigma one here, and I am updating the displacements as q2 is q1 plus delta q2. Okay, this was solved for a problem, and we can simulate acceleration like this, and we can calculate stresses over the remaining area of the domain. Okay, so that's what uh, I have tried to cover in this chapter. Actually, we have tried to cover four topics of different areas in the geotechnical engineering, stress deformation analysis that we can apply for the problems on footings, problems on retaining walls, problems on piles. Then we have. Uh, try to explain the construction phenomena, try to work with safe page, and lastly, the problem of excavation. Now, note that in this case, mainly we are having two assumptions. I want to repeat it. One is you are assuming a uh, weak solution in the analysis in the case of FPM, that is, we are approximating the variable in most of the case, displacement or picture head, or maybe uh, the head potential head also. So that we are assuming that within the element that is approximated by the shape function, that is the first assumption. And then you are uh, approximating a nearly semi-infinite domain into a finite domain. Okay. And you have to always take care of that while considering the boundary of the domain so that the boundary effect should not be there in your analysis. That is the main thing in the analysis part. Okay. I think you can always ask me the doubts, any doubts for it. In the audience, if you have any doubt, you can raise the hand. Or uh, put your query in chat box. Kailas Patil, sir. Savan sir, yeah. uh, uh, no any query from the audience side. Okay. If you have any query, you can also ask me by email also later on. There is no problem. I can always happy to uh, uh, reply them back. No problem. Sure, sir. Uh, if uh, anybody have a query, we'll take uh, and uh, mail to you. Okay, no problem, sir. Yeah. Now, I'm very thankful, Professor Vishwas Savan, sir. Actually, Professor Savan uh, stranded in Mumbai because of the lockdown, and uh, he could not reach to IIT Roorkee since last two months. And uh, when I was approach him, uh, because of a uh, good relationship with the, our GC Karad, uh, he immediately gave the, his consent to deliver a keynote lecture 
for this international conference sir we are very thankful to accepting our invitation as a keynote speaker and enlighten and guide to all the presenter with your uh, specific fm re related geotechnical applications sir in future also we are expecting same cooperation and guidance from you for our institute thank, thank you, you for giving your valuable time sir yeah thank you for giving me the opportunity good day to all of you thank you sir okay sir now we'll proceed to the next session session 1 day 2 session 1 for uh, this session we have external chair professor sumed maske head of civil engineering veer mata jizabai technological institute mumbai maske sir am i audible Maske sir, please unmute yourself. Ah, yes sir, you are audible sir. Thank you sir. My voice sir, is clear sir. Yes sir. Sir, I welcome you on behalf of Department of Civil Engineering, Government College of Engineering, Karad. Now I request Professor Maske, please chair the session and proceed the session. Uh, thank you, Professor. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to thankful to the. the organizing committee of the ICA CSE the department of civil engineering uh, government engineering college kara is always they are the leaders in the application of the advances in civil engineering and this is the fourth international conference on advances in civil and structural engineering and uh, today really i am glad that i am uh, getting this opportunity uh, to chair this session Uh, so i want to thank to all the stakeholders and all the participation uh, in this lockdown period also we are getting such opportunity to share our uh, research work or thank you uh, thank you sir uh, i will request you now we will start our uh, presentations thank you sir now i call paper id 97 abhishek srivastava abhishek are you there Hello. yes sir i am here sir yeah and start sharing my screen yes please thank you sir is my screen is visible to everybody yes yes, yes. okay thank you no. so i am abhishek narayan swastav i am a research scholar from uh, department of civil engineering iit delhi i am here to present my top uh, my research topic on the effect of leachate recirculation for enhancing bio gas generation for uh, uh, for organic production of municipal solid waste in simulated landfill bio recycle so we as we all know that municipal solid waste is uh, disposed in landfills conventionally but here i'll i'll discuss about the new method of landfilling in which Uh, we not only can enhance the biodeg biodegradation but also we can uh, procure uh, uh, more amount of biogas uh, for the energy generation as well so in my uh, presentation i'll be going through this outline introduction materials and methodology observations and conclusion so as we all know that india is a developing economy and it is promoting the urbanization and consequently the the enhanced population rate is producing the uh, rapid amount of municipal solid waste also and Now, thereby it is also requiring the huge amount of land for the um, uh, land filling also and it is expected to uh, uh, rise the production of uh, municipal solid waste also in upcoming years and uh, this, this this specific literature suggests dosi and amal suggesting that that the municipal solid waste uh, will be enhanced uh, in production rate by by three fold by 2050 so what are the uh, like adverse effect of the uh, municipal solid waste huge production as we all know that the like, the conventional land filling in india has seen a lot of uh, adverse effect on the environment like open dumping has caused the severe severe uh, environmental hazards in form of uh, groundwater contamination a uh, large amount of methane production that we have seen few years back in in mumbai also that in our land fill has caused a fire hazards lot of uh, particular uh, lot lot of environmental hazards 
so why we are concerned about the uh, specifically uh, like or for organic fraction you can see here that the organic fraction contains about 40 to 60 percent amount of uh, in uh, uh, plant of amount of in uh, mineral solid waste which is responsible for the nuisance cre creation like uh, uh, like fire uh, odor and leachate uh, you can see here in the right corner of the slide that the india also has the, the has the huge amount of uh, uh, mm, Uh, organic fraction in it that that can be uh, uh, procured for the biogas generation and here we can see that the, what could be the uh, consequences of open dumping like uh, if we dump simply dump the waste in a open manner the groundwater contam contamination could uh, could happen you know gas em emission could occur and uh, fire hazards low failures pest and rodents and odor problem can occur and uh, significantly affect our environment as you all know that Uh, the MSW is disposed in the uh, in conventional landfill in the dry dome manner. Why we are calling it a dry dry dome? Because it is confined in the liner system as a, as well as in the cover system. But if at all, uh, by any means, the cover system and the liner system breaks down, the leachate will percolate in the uh, from the uh, from the liner system and will uh, uh, it will consequently uh, contain uh, contaminate the like groundwater. and if it all the cover system also breaks the greenhouse gases produced from the degradation of the municipal solid waste it will con uh, it will pollute pollute our environment moreover it also has the slow degradation of waste lesser methane production and it takes a very long time for the waste stabilization and also the end products are very hazardous and the process is, is anaerobic and we all know that anaerobic process is slower than the aerobic process so to counter these uh, uh, disadvantages what we suggest uh, to uh, to operate landfill as a bioreactor system now what is bioreactor system in which in the bioreactor system what we what we do that we uh, recirculate the leachate produced from the uh, from the landfill system from the uh, to the top of the landfill so what we uh, uh, what we suggest here that the, uh, if the leachate is recirculated back to the uh, waste interstices it will uh, it will provide the even uh, kind of moisture in it and uh, and the uh, biodegradation rate will be enhanced and the rapid degradation will be achieved in the shorter period of time end product will also be non hazardous and minimal kind of kind of uh, outcomes and we can see here in in this graph also that the bio gas production in the biotel landfill takes very less lesser time as compared to the conventional landfill so <clears throat> so it is suggested to operate landfill as a bioreactor in order to get a higher outcome like positive outcomes in a shorter period of time so to accomplish these objectives we collected the municipal solid waste sample from the okla landfill site of daddy and we sedated the waste and we mixed the smaller fractions and then we procured the organic fraction unit why we are concerned about more about the organic fraction because uh, organic fraction contains about uh, 40 to, uh, like 50 to 60% of the major major uh, portion of the municipal solid waste which is also responsible for the uh, for the nuisance if openly dumped and if we we could utilize this organic fraction we can we can achieve the uh, the higher rate of uh, biogas which can be procured for the energy production so initial calculation of the organic fraction of mixed solid waste was carried out in this we can see here that the organic or the volatile solid content and the organic con uh, matter content of bs is is very high is is containing more than 59% and 35% respectively also the bh is also in the neutral range nearby the neutral range which which is Uh, like ideal for the anaerobic digestion process, and uh, also the uh, although the soluble BOD and COD values are very high, which uh, which can be uh, like uh, uh, treated by the bioreactor landfill landfill system. So moreover, the, uh, this is the my experimental protocol in which uh, uh, we operated the landfill in the in a conventional manner also and in the bioreactor landfill manner also in which. Uh, in in the right part we can see here that, that this landfilling is operated as a dry dump kind of landfill in which no recirculation system is there however on the on the left left side you can see the leachate leachate recirculation system is provided on the bioreactor landfill kind of uh, landfill it is a kind of a landfill simulator and this is the gas collection pipe which was inserted throughout the waste and this is the tetler bag in which we collected the biogas and and analyzed for the composition of biogas and qualitative and quantitative both kind of analysis was carried out and here the leachate samples were carried out for the physical chemical uh, and biological and hydrochemical analysis uh, part and this is uh, 
and how the sampling and operation was carried out it is uh, uh, being shown in this slide in which we can see that the layer of mixed waste was placed in 15 to centimeter each uh, and this is the lift of the waste height of the waste and the, uh, before that we uh, placed the drainage layer out of uh, gravels of 15 centimeter thick layer was a uh, layer of pre washed gravel was placed over to that the waste layer was placed over to that 5 cm of uh, 5 cm of gravel and 5 cm of uh, sand was placed and the leachate recirculation was carried out every second day and temperature measurement uh, was carried out from these uh, ports gas sampling was carried out at every second day and the solid sampling was carried out at an interval, interval of 2 months and over uh, to, in order to enhance the biodegradation process the sewage sludge and the black water was uh, percolated throughout the uh, uh, throughout the waste in order to initiate the biodegradation process so this is the working protocol in which we can see the organic fraction of municipal solid waste was threaded and valorized and uh, the dry tomb and biotech kind of uh, reactor was placed after inoculation the uh, the substrate material was fed into the biotech kind of lysimeters uh, lys and physical chemical biological and the biogas analysis of the uh, leachate as well as the gas samples were carried out. So in the observations, we can see uh, that uh, firstly, I would like to also uh, tell that the, that the uh, waste undergoes the endobic digestion uh, while we landfill the material. So in, in the endobic digestion process, what uh, what occurs, in the, the endobic digestion takes place in a four, uh, in a four phase manner in which firstly the hydrolysis part occurs in which the outer structure of the substrate material breaks down after that the acidogenesis process will take place which is responsible for the uh, production of uh, you know the biogas so in which the, in the second stage which occurred after the 10th day uh, the acidogenesis process occurs in which we can see the ph of the value go, uh, uh, went down and after uh, and over the period of time it uh, attained almost neutral range of ph which is uh, which is also suggested for the optimum uh, biogas requirement that the pH should be 6.5 to 7.5. However, the electronic conductivity also uh, increased, and then after it, it uh, stabilized over the period of landfilling because of uh, like uh, because of the release of inorganic salts. The and the TS all TS value also uh, uh, initially it, it went up because of the solubilization of organic matter in the leachate. And finally, as soon as the stabilization of organic matter occurred, the total solid was were minimized. <coughs> the organic strength of the leachate were also reflected by the BOD and COD values, in which we can see the similar changes, but the BOD and COD ratio were in between 0.4 to 0.5. <coughs> we can see here that the that the maximum amount of BOD reduction was obtained in the uh, biorutal uh, landfill part, and uh, the BFA BFA is also attained. Uh, uh, like it, it also the graph also goes up during the acidogenesis part. The VFA is a volatile fatty, fatty acids. The acid, in, during the acidogenesis phase, the VFA production also increased. And over the period of time, as soon as the as long as the uh, endobic digestion process occurred, the VFA uh, like stabilized. This is the result which I I wanted to like, uh, show you more precisely. This is the cumulative methane production of uh, both the landfill process. In which we can see the dry tomb landfilling showed a very very lesser amount of methane production over the 120 days of landfilling. However, a biorotel landfilling showed almost three to four times of uh, methane gas production, which could be utilized for the energy process, energy procurement. Thus, by the theme of the presentation, I would like to conclude that that uh, leachate uh, recirculation has positively affected uh, the biodegradation process by the even uh, recirculation and uh,
हाँ सर यस सर प्लीज 